Hi, I'm Vanessa from SpeakEnglishWithVanessa.com. Are you hungry? I hope so. Let's talk about it. Do you like to cook meals at home nonstop, then doing the dishes and then preparing what you're gonna make for the next meal all the time? Probably not. Sometimes it's nice to go to a restaurant, but nowadays things have changed a bit. Here in the US, restaurants are slowly starting to open, but not everyone feels comfortable going to a restaurant. For me, I have two young children, so even without the current situation, it's still a little bit complicated to go into a restaurant. But we don't always want to cook. Sometimes it's nice to eat restaurant food. So what we can do is order food on the phone, pick up the food, and take it home to eat. Or sometimes we take it to a park to eat. And that is what I would like to do today with you. I'd like to invite you to join me as I order food on the phone and pick it up. This is a very natural daily life situation. You are gonna hear a fast conversation that I have on the phone with the woman who's working at the restaurant, but after each short clip from the conversation, I'm going to be explaining to you the phrases we used, the different expressions, so that you can use this as well. Because sometimes talking on the phone is tough, you can't see the other person, but also there's a lot of background noise, sometimes the restaurant is loud, the person on the phone is just speaking quickly, they're not thinking about your perspective. So today I want to break down this conversation and help you to tackle this seemingly tough situation, but after this conversation I hope it will be more doable and approachable. We're going to be watching each of the clips from the conversation one time, then I'm going to explain it, and then you'll watch it again after my explanation. I hope that the second time will be more understandable to you, your listening skills will have improved, your grammar and vocabulary will have improved. So, put your helmet on, put your seatbelt on. This is going to be a fast ride, but you can do it. All right, let's get started with my clip. We just got back from a hike and I'm so hungry. <laughs> but we really don't have much food in our fridge, so we decided to order out, and I thought I would invite you to join me in the process of ordering food out at a restaurant to go pick up. So let's see what happens. Hi, I'm Cafe. This is Mackenzie. How can I help you? Hi, I'd like to make an order for pickup. This was a pretty fast start, wasn't it? Well, in this first clip, I introduced what I wanted to do very clearly and directly. I said, I would like to make an order for pickup. For pickup means that I'm gonna be the one getting the food. But we could switch that out and say, I would like to make an order for delivery. And that means that that restaurant will bring the food to your house. Now, this is typically in the US only available for big restaurants, like chain restaurants. The restaurant that I'm ordering from, there's only one of them near my house. It's not an international or even a, a national or even a citywide <laughs> restaurant. There's only one of them, so they don't have a delivery service. So that's why I said for pickup, and I used the verb would. I would like, very polite. I would like to make an order for pickup. All right, we're gonna listen to that clip one more time. I hope that you'll be able to understand a little bit more. I know it starts off with a bang, <laughs> but I hope you'll be able to understand a little bit more. We're gonna listen to that first part of the clip, and then you're gonna watch the second part of the clip as well that I'll explain in just a minute. Let's go. Hi, I'm Cafe. This is Mackenzie. How can I help you? Hi, I'd like to make an order for pickup. Yes, I'd like to get the duck spring rolls. All right. Also a big Greek salad. All right. You heard, what can I get for you? She said, what can I get for you? This is a common restaurant expression when you're ordering on the phone. She wants to know, what are you gonna order? This is similar to the phrase, how can I help you? But usually we hear, what can I get for you at a restaurant? and how can I help you in a retail store where you're gonna buy clothes or buy a phone or something like this. 
Notice that in my answer, I used the word the before my order. This is extremely common in a restaurant. I said the duck spring rolls. I'd like to order the duck spring rolls. I'm talking about a specific item on the menu. So you might say, as you're looking at the menu, even in a fast food restaurant, you might say, oh, I'd like to order the number five pork dumplings. Okay, you're talking about that specific item, the number five. All right, now we're gonna listen to that clip one more time. Listen for what can I get for you? And my answer, the duck spring rolls. After we listen to that clip, we're gonna immediately listen to the next clip. So get ready, let's listen. Yes, I'd like to get the duck spring rolls. All right. Also a big Greek salad. All right. Also enter the dragon. And how did you want that cooked? Uh, what do you recommend? We recommend medium rare to rare. Okay, um, how about medium rare? All right. There is a lot happening in this short clip. I ordered a tuna dish, and this dish just has a fancy name, enter the dragon on their menu. She asked me an important question. She said, how did you want that cooked? Notice that she uses the past tense. How did you want that cooked? And you can use this equally the same amount as how do you want that cooked? She could have asked me either question and they both would have been equally fine. How did you want that cooked? How do you want that cooked? Sometimes we use these kind of uh, flexible tenses to be more polite in these restaurant situations. Unless you are working in a restaurant, maybe you are, you don't need to worry about the tense. It's more important to understand the context and how to answer. But you might hear people say this, how did you want that cooked? Or how do you want that cooked? She's asking about how done or how cooked I want my tuna. This is often asked for fish, like tuna, salmon, and sometimes for hamburgers or steak, which you'll see in just a minute. <laughs> there are different levels of doneness. This is what we call it, doneness, how much you would like it cooked. There is rare, which is basically raw, very red in the middle. Then we have medium rare, pretty red still. Then we have medium, a little pink in the middle. Then we have medium well, just a small amount of pink, and then well done or well, and this is no pink in the middle. This is completely cooked. Usually this is not recommended for these types of meats. So what I like to do is what you just saw. I like to ask the restaurant what they recommend. You're welcome to do this too. This is very common in a restaurant. I wanna know what the chef or what the restaurant thinks is the best amount of doneness for the meat. I don't want it overcooked, I don't want it undercooked. I want them to make the best decision here. Of course, if you have some special diet needs, then you know you can say what you want and it's not going to offend the restaurant. If they say, we recommend medium, and you say, oh no, 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 I don't want any red, I want it to be well done, that's fine, they'll do what you want. The customer is always right. But for me, I like to ask what they recommend. You also heard me say this phrase, how about medium rare? How about, why did I say this? Usually we use how about to give a polite suggestion to other people. For example, you might say to your friends, how about we go to the beach this afternoon? And you're just giving a suggestion. You're not saying we have to go to the beach. <laughs> you're just giving a suggestion. It doesn't seem a little bit strange that the customer would give a suggestion to the restaurant because they will do whatever I want. I'm the customer, this is very normal. Why do I need to give a suggestion? Well, I'm just being polite. This is a common phrase that we use when we're in these type of restaurant or store situations. Let's imagine that you're trying on a shirt in a store and you like the shirt, but you don't exactly like the color. So the employee comes to you and says, can I get that for you in a different color? You might say, yeah, uh, how about red? You're suggesting, I would like to try this shirt, but in a different color. You might say, yeah, how about red? Or you could also say, do you have red? I'd like to try red. But we often use this lovely expression, how about? How about medium rare? How about red? Great, all right, 
Let's watch that clip one more time. I want you to listen carefully for how she asked me about how I want it cooked, how I answered, how I said how about, and then we're gonna go on to the next clip where I'm also going to continue my order. Listen carefully. Also, enter the dragon. And how did you want that cooked? Uh, what do you recommend? We recommend medium rare to rare. Okay, um, how about medium rare? Alrighty. And finally, the Gustavo's Gourmet Hamburger Steak. Um, what what do you think? You think medium well is normal for that? I mean, most people we'll go for medium on that one. Okay, let's just do medium then. All right, in this clip, I finished ordering all of the food that I was going to get because I, you'll see later, I have a gift certificate, so I decided to order a lot of food because I wouldn't really need to pay for it. <laughs> but did you notice in this clip, if you did not, when we watch it again, please try to notice, I said the in front of my order. The Gustavo's hamburger steak, the, because I'm talking about a specific item on their menu. When I asked her about what is normal for the doneness of the hamburger steak, she said most people go for medium on that one. Do you know this phrasal verb to go for? Most people go for medium on this one. It is extremely common to use this phrasal verb in restaurants. When you are ordering something, you might say, all right, I'm gonna go for the tuna and the steak. I'm gonna go for the salad. I'm gonna go for, this just means to choose. I'm gonna choose that one. But we use this phrasal verb a lot when we're ordering in a restaurant. All right, let's watch that clip again and go on to the next clip. Listen carefully. And finally, the Gustavo's Gourmet Hamburger Steak. Oh, right, wonderful. And how would you like that cooked? Um, what, what do you think? You think medium well is normal for that? I mean, most people go for medium on that one. Okay, let's just do medium then. Alrighty, and anything else for you? That's all. Yes, that's it. Here she is repeating my order to make sure that I got everything correct. I think this is a common practice around the world in restaurants. Seems like a good idea, right? <laughs> but I used two phrases with the word that's. They are slightly different, so I wanna help you understand them and also use them because we use them all the time, like a lot of expressions from this video. So when she asks anything else for you, she's wanting to know, are you going to order anything else? Anything else for you? And I said, that's all. That's all means I'm finished. <laughs> there is no more, this is the end, that's all. It's not rude to say, it is extremely helpful in fact to say, anything else I can get for you? Nope, that's all, thank you. After she listed all of the things that I ordered, I said, that's it, that's it. Yes, that's it. How is this different from that's all? Well, here I'm telling her, you got it correct. That's it. This is common in other situations too, not just restaurants. This is very useful for you as an English learner if you're having a conversation and you forget a word, which happens to us all, even for native English speakers, this happens too. You might be talking about an experience you had driving. I was driving down the street and then uh, a dog ran into the road and I didn't wanna hit the dog, so I turned my car and I ran into a, what's that word? The thing on the side of the road, it goes down, rain is in it sometimes, and your friend might say, a ditch. You ran into a ditch. And here you can use our key expression. You can say, that's it. Yes, I ran into a ditch. You're letting that person know with enthusiasm <laughs> that they got it correct. That was the word that you were thinking of. So here I used that's it to tell her, you got my order correct. Yep, that's it. Or you could tell your friend, that's it. You understood the word that I was trying to say. <laughs> All right, let's go back and watch this clip and then go on to the next clip. Alrighty, and anything else for you? That's all. All right, so I've got the duck spring rolls, the large treat salad, the tuna, cooked medium rare, and then the Gustavo cooked medium. Yes, that's it. All right, perfect. We'll have to turn it take out probably in about 15 minutes. Is that okay? Yes, um, I have a quick question though. I was, I was given a gift certificate to Stony Knob. When I pay, um, should I just bring that with me or what should I do? 
Because I don't order pickup very often, I wasn't sure what this restaurant wanted to do. I didn't know if they wanted me to pay over the phone. Sometimes they'll ask for your card number over the phone or if they wanted me to just pay when I went to the restaurant. So that's why I asked. And because I had a gift certificate, I wasn't sure what their process was. So I simply asked them, what should I do? And this is good news for you because maybe there's multiple cultural practices that you're not sure about. It is no problem to ask. I asked, you saw me ask, I didn't know what to do. This is my home country. I feel familiar with a lot of the customs, but there's still things that I don't know too. And I wanna make sure that I'm being polite to that restaurant. So I just asked, what should I do? And I also, because it's a gift certificate, I wanted them to be aware of this in case there were any little rules about the gift certificate. Sometimes gift certificates or gift cards have rules like, uh, you need to go into the store to pay or you need to spend this much money to use it. So I just wanted them to be aware so that there were no surprises when I went to pick up my food. All right, let's watch this clip and then go on to our next one. All right, perfect. We'll have this ready to take out probably in about 15 minutes. Is that okay? Yes, um, I have a quick question though. I was I was given a gift certificate to Stony Knob. When I pay, um, should I just bring that with me or what should I do? Yeah, just bring it with you um, and we'll be able, we can just take it from you. You can either come in to pay with it or we can just take it from you in the car and do it inside. Okay. Um, so either way, yeah, but just bring it with you. In this clip, she's giving me two options. One option is I can go into the restaurant and pay for the food when I arrive, or they will come to my car, take my payment, go in, make the payment, and bring it back to me. There are two options. She uses a lovely expression here. She says, either way, you can use this in so many situations in daily life. If you and your friend are gonna drive to the beach and you're not sure whose car you're gonna take, you might say, well, should you drive or should I? And your friend might say, I don't know, either way is fine with me. Or if your friend says, well, do you wanna to cook tonight or do you wanna to go to a restaurant? You might say, ah, either way is fine with me, either way. Both of these are okay with you, either way. All right, let's go and watch this clip again and then go on to our next one. Okay. Um, so either way, yeah, but just bring it with you. Okay, I should just give you a call when I get there? Yes, ma'am, that would be great. I live in the south of the U.S., and it is quite common to use the term ma'am, even though I'm probably not that much older than she is. I'm not her mother or her grandmother, but it's still polite in the south to say ma'am. So if someone asks me a question, I might say, oh, yes, ma'am, that's right, if I'm talking on the phone to my bank or even if I go into a restaurant, I might say that, or into the bank. This is polite, but it is not necessary. <laughs> if you say this in the North, or in the West, or in the Midwest of the US, I don't think this is as common, but in the South of the US, when you say ma'am, this is only for women, just to let you know, <laughs> when you say ma'am to a woman, or yes sir, to a man, their eyes get all sparkly and lit up because you're being so polite. And in Southern culture where I live, this is kind of what children are taught. They're taught that when you say, yes ma'am, yes sir, you're being polite to older people. But even in restaurant situations when there's not a big age difference, this is still a polite situation with uh, a store and a customer, so you're gonna hear those expressions if you visit the south of the US. Please don't feel like you need to use ma'am when you're talking with people on a daily basis, but I just wanted you to know why she said ma'am to me on the phone. All right, let's watch that clip one more time and then go on to our next one. Okay, I should just give you a call when I get there. Yes, ma'am, that would be great. All right. And let me see, what's the name for your order? Vanessa. It's 412. Did you hear that question she asked? What's the name for the order? Why didn't she ask me, what's your name? She wants to know who can they write on the receipt or on the ticket so they can deliver it to the right person in their car. But why didn't she ask me, what's your name? She could have said that and you might hear that sometimes for pickup orders. 
but it's a little bit more common to hear what's the name for the order because maybe I'm not gonna be the person who picks up the order. Maybe it's gonna be someone else. Maybe I'm making an order for someone else. For some reason, this expression is just more common in restaurant situations when you're making an order. What's the name for the order? It feels a little more indirect too, not too personal like, what's your name? I wanna be your friend. <laughs> it's a little more separated, so you feel like it's a professional situation. They're only asking for uh, a business reason, not for a personal reason. What's the name for the order? And I just told her my name. Okay, let's watch that little clip again, and then we will finish this first conversation in the next clip. All right, take a deep breath. Let's watch. Let me see, what's the name for your order? Vanessa. It's 412. All right, and yeah, if you don't mind, just give us a call when you call in. We'll bring it out to you and get the gift card and all that. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. We'll see you then. Bye. Right, bye bye. She uses another polite expression here. If you don't mind, just give us a call when you pull in. This phrase, if you don't mind, is lovely to use in business situations or just any time that you want to be polite. You might ask, your coworker, if you don't mind, can you send me an email when you're all done, if you don't mind. Or uh, maybe my husband already has a long list of things that he's gonna make at the grocery store, or things he's gonna buy at the grocery store, and as he's leaving the door, I might say, oh wait, if you don't mind, can you pick up another bag of apples? This is a little bit, maybe a little bit inconvenient for him because he already has a list, he's about to leave. So I just wanna use this polite expression. You don't always need to use it, but there are many situations when you can just to be polite. Did you recognize that she used a phrasal verb at the end of her question? To pull in. Do you know what that means? Just give us a call when you pull in. This is talking about my car arriving to the parking lot. That means that I have arrived at the restaurant. You might use this phrasal verb to text your friend or to call your friend when you are meeting her at a store, for example. You might say, um, hey, I'll be in in a minute. I just pulled in. That means that your car just arrived in the parking lot. This is especially if you're driving. If you're taking the bus, you might say, yeah, the bus just pulled in. I'll be there in just a second, but we use it more often for when we're driving. I just pulled in, I'll be inside in a minute. All right, we have successfully made an order on the phone, but we need to pick it up. So there's a couple more clips that I'd like to show you so that you can successfully pick up food in English. Let's watch that first clip. Hey, so sorry. No, you're fine. Um, I was coming to pick up a pickup order. Okay, what was the name? Vanessa. Vanessa, okay, I'll go see if that's right. Thank you. I used the phrase, I was coming to pick up a pickup order. <laughs> you see how I used this as a verb, to pick up, and then also as a noun, a pickup order. It's the same idea here. But I used an interesting verb tense. I said, I was coming. Do you notice how this is the past? Hmm. <laughs> we saw this earlier as well, that we sometimes are a little bit more fluid in tenses when we're being extra polite, but it is no problem to say, I'm picking up a pickup order in the present tense. I am picking up an order, or I'm here to pick up a pickup order. No problem. There's a couple different expressions we can use, and that's just the one that I chose. I'm not sure if it's the same for your country nowadays, but in the US, we are still required or suggested to wear a mask in face-to-face -face conversations that are close together, especially in these kind of public situations like restaurants and stores, these types of things. So for her, she, probably a little bit uncomfortable, she needs to wear her mask during the her whole work day. <laughs> but for me, only when I'm interacting with the customer is this type of thing, or with the employee, is this type of thing necessary. I'm curious what it's like in your country right now. Let me know in the comments what that's like. <laughs> All right, let's watch that clip one more time. I want you to listen carefully for my wonderful phrase, and then we're going to watch the next clip. Hey, so sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, I was coming to pick up a pickup oh, order. Yeah. Okay, what was the name? Vanessa. Vanessa, okay, I'll go see if that's right. Thank you. 
Okay, I have my, that's a gift certificate. Okay. So this one gave me and my card. All right, I'll be right back. Thanks so much. Did you notice that she told me the total for my order, but she didn't use the word dollar? She said, that's going to be 6527 This is a lot more than I normally spend at a restaurant, maybe double the amount that I normally spend, but I had a gift certificate, so I felt like it was okay to splurge a bit. <laughs> Usually eating out at a local restaurant is not that expensive, at least in my city. If you come to visit a small town in the US, don't worry, it's usually not that expensive. But I thought that it would be a fun time to splurge a bit. So I want you to know that when she was telling me the amount of money, she didn't say dollars, she only said the number, 6527. If you'd like to practice some big numbers in English, like hotel numbers, phone numbers, dates, these types of things, I made a whole video just specifically for how to say big numbers in English. It can be a little bit complex. We have a lot of different expressions for this. So you can check out that lesson up here if you wanna dive deeper into it. All right, let's watch that clip one more time and then go on to the next one. Be okay, I have my, that's a gift certificate. Okay. So this one you gave me and my card. All right, I'll be okay. right back. Thanks so much. So much. Do you guys have a lot of people come in to do pickup yeah. like this? Yeah. That's awesome. Do you know why I asked her, do you have people coming in for pickup orders like this often? Why did I ask her that? <laughs> it's not necessary, but sometimes I kind of like to have a little small talk at a grocery store or at a restaurant because I'm curious about what their experience is like. So if I'm at the grocery store, I might ask, um, yeah, have you, have you guys been really busy today? Or just some kind of question to ask about them. Maybe it's not appreciated by them. Maybe it is, I don't know, but it's just something interesting for me. But I wanna talk about one expression that we used here so that you can use it too. She said, if you could sign these for us, if you could, this is extremely polite. We often use the full expression, if you could sign these for us, it would be great. It would be great is used at the end. Make sure that you use would, it would be great. This is using a if type of sentence. If you could sign these, that would be great. But she cut off that end part. It is implied or understood. I knew what she meant. That's perfectly fine. It's very normal to do that. But at the beginning, she's asking me to do something. Do you know what she's asking me to sign? This is the receipt. She's asking me to sign it because I used my debit card, but also I needed to write a tip on the receipt. And there's a spot on the receipt, it says the total, and then underneath that there's a line that says tip, and then beyond that it says total. So you have to do a little math. <laughs> but usually in the US it is common, even for pickup orders where there's not a normal server, to give 20% for a tip. So the easiest way to do this is to take the first number, so for in my case, that's six, and to double it, which is 12, and because it was 65, I could add an extra dollar. So I could give her a $13 tip, or you can give more if you wanna be extra generous, or if the service is not too good, you can give less, but 20% is expected. This is a kind of an annoying custom in the US because all of a sudden your bill gets a lot higher, but it is necessary and it's pretty rude, extremely rude, <laughs> if you don't give a tip. In fact, for this server, my tip is the only money that she's going to make. The restaurant doesn't really pay her. I think they pay her like $2 an hour. It just covers some basic fees but it doesn't really go to her kind of tax money. But my money, your tip money, is the money, the only salary that the server will make. This is very different from other countries. So keep this in mind as you are tipping, <laughs> tipping your server. For me, I've been a server for a part-time job many times in high school and in college. So I know that tips are very, uh, important <laughs> for servers and if I can be extra generous for a tip I always try to do this 
Um, it's just something that's appreciated. So I wrote the tip amount, then I did some math to see how much it would cost in total, and I gave it back to her. A quick note about a gift certificate. If you have a gift certificate or a gift card, for me, my total was $67, and I had a $50 gift card, but I gave a 20% tip based on the total amount, not based on the amount that I paid. So I gave a 20% tip uh, from $67, not from the amount that I paid. This is important because there's some <laughs> complicated stuff that goes on in the restaurant where you should, in the end, <laughs> you should give 20% tip based on the total amount, even if you have a gift card, even if you have a coupon, gift certificate, any of this, based on the total amount. All right, let's go on to our final clip. We're gonna watch that clip one more time, then go on to our final clip. Take a deep breath. <sighs> let's watch. So much. Do you guys have a lot of people come in to do pickup yeah. like this? Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. And I don't need that back. Can I just give that to you guys? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Right. And... Oops, sorry. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you. In this clip, she said, here you are. Is she saying I am in the car, here you are in the car. No. <laughs> Instead, this is common when you hand someone something from a store, from a restaurant, these type of situations. She could also have said, here you go. They both mean exactly the same thing. Here you go, here you are. If you go to a store and the cashier gives you a bag that has your dress that you just purchased in it, the cashier might say, here you go, have a nice day. They're just handing you the bag. That's a common expression for giving someone something. Here you go, here you are. All right, let's watch that clip one final time. Are you ready? Let's do it. And I don't need that bag. Can I just give that to you guys? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Right. And... Oops, sorry. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining me as I ordered food on the phone and picked it up. I hope that you learned a lot of useful daily expressions in this lesson. And now I have a question for you. In the comments, let me know how often do you eat in a restaurant? Or you can use the phrasal verb, how often do you eat out? Let me know in the comments and thank you so much for learning English with me. I'll see you again next Friday for a new lesson here on my YouTube channel. Bye. And now my family is enjoying our food as a little picnic on our back deck. It was so nice to not cook, to not clean up dishes, <laughs> and to just be able to enjoy this special meal as a family. The next step is to download my free ebook, Five Steps to Becoming a Confident English Speaker. You'll learn what you need to do to speak confidently and fluently. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more free lessons. Thanks so much. Bye.